Nick, thank you, and thanks for giving me the opportunity of coming here today and listening to everybody's experiences of uh, connecting schools and employers, which, of course, is so important, and I'm sure we're all going to learn a lot from that. And as I'm sure you all know, there's a huge amount uh, that employers can bring to schools, and I don't think the benefits can be uh, overestimated. Anyone who's seen the effect on pupils who have been provided with experience of the world of work, a direct line of sight to work, particularly pupils from disadvantaged backgrounds or from workless households. Anybody who's seen the effect that that can have cannot but know what, as, how important this is in terms of making them realise why they're at school, why they need to study, and enabling to, them to visualise uh, their goals and work backwards from that as to what they need to do to, to achieve them, and also to understand what excellence looks like, what first class looks like, and also to get those essential life skills that we know are so important. So thank you all of you uh, for everything you're doing, uh, if you're involved already, or, 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 or for considering it if, if, if you're thinking about it. We know from research from McKinsey's and others that careers advice on a pure one-to-one -one basis is of generally of little value unless it's also accompanied by activities engaged with the workplace. And the Education Employer Task Force research itself tells us that if pupils ha at school have five or more employer engagements during their secondary school education, they're seven times less likely to be NEETs. And I know from my own experience as an academy sponsor how important employer engagement is. I was for 30 years before I got into the education world uh, in the venture capital business. Quite a lot of people in education still don't know what a venture capitalist is. Certainly my son didn't. When at the age of eight somebody asked him what his father did for a living, he replied, I think he's something called an adventure copulist. Uh, but uh, my wife and I, uh, uh, in 2008, uh, were appointed by the Labour government as sponsors of a school just up the road in South Westminster, Pimlico, uh, secondary school, which uh, was pretty much failing on all counts. Uh, the morale amongst the staff and pupils was extremely low. The um, results were very poor. The behaviour was very, very difficult indeed. Uh, and they had really no engagement with the world of work. In fact, they almost had a dogma dogmatic uh, uh, opposition to engagement with business. Uh, but thanks to the um, young leadership team we managed to recruit, they turned the school down around remarkably quickly. And I think part of that was very much our Raising Aspirations programme where we brought in people from work and, uh, and sent our, 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 our students on many trips and many engagement activities. It was a bit chaotic to start with. Uh, I just initially got, just got all my mates to come and talk and it was a bit disorganised but then we got some organisation, Lynn Proctor here today now runs our Raising Aspirations programme and, and brings, brings order to, uh, to my, to my bright, occasional bright ideas and I think that has been a big part, that these, a lot of our students come from households where they probably rarely see anybody dressed in a suit, they really don't know what first class and excellence and high standards look like uh, and many of course they um, come from in households where no one works and quite often nobody has ever worked. Uh, and and one of the, another ways that uh, employers can be so helpful of course is in the world of governance and as Nick says I'm also responsible for governance. Uh, I think historically governance in this country has been a very representative model. We, we need one of those, two of those, another one of those, and governing bodies have always been assembled on the basis of who they represent, and then as an afterthought, people get around to thinking whether anybody in the room's got any relevant experience. Uh, and I, I've tried very hard since I've been in this job over the last two and a half years to turn that on its head so that uh, we've, uh, we, we recruit people with skills first. You may represent a particular constituency but you must have the relevant skills. And of course, governing bodies play a vital strategic role as essentially non-executive leaders of our schools. And as we move towards a system where more schools are academies and many more schools are operating in multi-academy trusts, we're increasingly seeing models of governance where one group of people, whether it's a governing body or a trust board, oversee a number of schools. This enables us to use our best people well, and it's a very good uh, opportunity for them to compare and contrast between different schools and enables the governors and directors themselves to up their game. 
And uh, people from the world of work, of course, have experience of finance, strategic planning, data analysis, performance-related pay, uh, recruitment. They have a great deal to bring. But it is not just uh, a one-way street. I think it's very much a two-way street for em em employers because a lot of them see the benefits to particularly their younger and, and less experienced employer, employees of sitting on, on governing bodies and exposing them to uh, debate and decisions at a level which perhaps they won't yet have, have, have achieved in, 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 their, in, their, in, their, in their firms. And many organisations, uh, ranging from Lloyds Bank, Aviva, PwC and others, have had fairly substantial programmes uh, uh, on this for their employees and have seen the benefits. And because of those benefits and because we are constantly looking for uh, governors, my department has for many years funded various programmes in this area. Uh, and the University of Manchester uh, is one of many organisations that have been supported. They have a, a big school governors initiative uh, for their staff and their alumni. And they've already placed over 500 people from their staff and alumni on governing boards of, of nearly 200 schools in the Manchester area. And my own department has a, a very active network of governors for schools. And as we move more to a multi-academy trust system and we need higher calibre people, more experienced people from business and the professions sitting on the board of multi-academy trusts as non-executive directors, we've developed a programme called Academy Ambassadors, very ably run by Kirsty Watt, who is going to talk uh, to you shortly. And we've already made 240 placements of people from the world of business and the professions to sit on the boards of multi-academy trusts as pro bono non-executive directors. That's quite a big philanthropic movement, a big connection between a business and schools. And we reckon there were probably at least as many people up and down the country who've been appointed to MAP boards through local connections. So it's really quite a powerful uh, force. And um, we've provided funding to the Education Employers Task Force and uh, building on the work they've done so far, we've now appointed them as our preferred supplier for a multi-year contract to deliver free governments recruitment and matching services for schools and employers across England. And uh, we're hopefully going to, well, we're going to see this, uh, this uh, programme up and running and firing, firing on all cylinders, aren't we, Nick, come in September? Good. And it's particularly going to focus on cold spots, areas of the country which have found it traditionally difficult to recruit good governors. Some uh, people who've been involved through the Academy's Ambassadors Programme or, or from elsewhere have gone further than just sitting on the board of uh, multi-academy trusts or being chairs of them, and they've actually sponsored schools in their own right. And examples would include British Aerospace, ARC, which is a group sponsored by a number of investment professionals, and of course Harris uh, Academy is one of our top performing multi-academy trust, trust chains sponsored by Lord Harris. And we want and we're looking for many more uh, high quality uh, business sponsors. We have significant money available uh, to expand the programme, 600 million. And of course a number of uh, employers are also setting up free schools, which I'm also responsible for, and university technical colleges. I mentioned um, earlier the dearth of uh, engagement with the world of work that uh, I experienced nearly 10 years ago at Pimlico Academy. And since then, not only have we come a long way, but also I think the whole school system has. Uh, and there are now a number of organisations like Business in the Community's Business Class, uh, which has 138 partnerships with a range of sc with schools and companies like KPMG, British Gas, Cap Gemini, Deloitte's The Potential. Uh, we have Make the Grade in Leeds, Birmingham and now in London, and we have Made, Made in Sheffield, and we have Barclays Life Skills. And of course, the EET has Inspiring the Future, Speakers for Schools and Primary Futures. Inspiring the Futures programme has, uh, I understand, enabled more than 7,500 individual employers to connect with schools and, and over a million careers-focused interactions. And at the end of 2014, because we regard the link between the world of work and schools as so important, uh, we set up the Careers and Enterprise Company, which is not there to reinvent the wheel, but to improve the connections between schools and employers and organisations like the ones I've mentioned, particularly in areas of the country where they find this, this a struggle. One excellent initiative 
of the Careers and Enterprise Company is the Enterprise Advisor Network, which connects employees to schools. And this is a group of volunteers. They uh, give up approximately eight hours a month to this. Uh, and since this was launched in September, there are now over 850 enterprise advisors working with 700 schools. The uh, Careers and Enterprise Companies program is nationwide. They have 35 LEPs involved. They've published their cold spot analysis. They have a toolkit of evidence of what is available. They've already announced 33 awards of a program of £5 million fund uh, for, of, uh, of uh, good practice, and 75% of that's been awarded in the cold spot, spot areas. And we've also made £12 million available to a program to improve mentoring. I personally believe that every school should have one member of staff who focuses completely 100% of their time on links with the world of work, universities, etc., as, as we do in my own group. I, I think that's so important. Quite a few schools really struggle to see that they have the money to do this, but when, as I say, you've seen the benefits to pupils in terms of giving them a much clearer focus and purpose at school, the benefits seem to be in the payback seem to be obvious, so I'm keen to encourage many more schools. And as we see uh, schools suffering from uh, financial pressures, we're seeing them redesigning their, their, their budgets and, and their, their, um, their finances in a much more bottom-up way, as we, we, of course we all have to do in business, uh, which, as we all know from business, results actually in much more effective use of resources, and I'm hopeful this will see many more schools uh, freeing up resources to focus much more on the workplace connection. And, of course, work experience is so important. I was discussing earlier uh, with Professor Schwartz from uh, Harvard University, uh, who's recently done some analysis on this, that people of my generation, we used to do ho holiday jobs, uh, from, from delivering the post. I was a British railways porter, drove a, a van, all sorts of things. And these jobs are so much more difficult to come by now for a whole host of reasons. We have some excellent organisations like the Social Mobility Foundation helping make connections uh, with businesses for work experience for people from schools and we've now made this a very important part of post-16 uh, of post-16 provision we've made it easier in terms of health and safety and dbs checks for employers and one issue which was quite significant in terms of insurance uh, for employers to take on short-term work experience youngsters so I know that it can be daunting uh, from scratch for employers to work closely with schools, but as far as this government is concerned, we welcome the engagement of the world of work, employers, professionals, with the school system in any way that works for them. The door is wide open. We see it's absolutely essential that they work in tandem. And thank you all for everything you're doing.